As an interventional dry eye specialist who has incorporated low-level light therapies into my optometry practice by adding an esthetician, I'm an advocate for advanced therapies as I have seen them help so many patients, but I always want the patient, whether you're my patient or not, to understand all aspects of not only their medical issue, but the available treatments. So today in that spirit, I wanted to impart a little education about something that's not super common in eye care. This isn't really an eye doctor's area necessarily, but this is pity rosacea. And the information available stating that UVA1 phototherapy has demonstrated high levels of efficacy and tolerability for treating a variety of inflammatory and neoplastic skin diseases like pity rosacea. So there's actually four types of rosacea. Erythematotelangiectatic rosacea is the first that's the kind that has lots of little blood vessels on the face papulopustular or acne related rosacea where you'll have like actual pustules phimidus rosacea that shows big changes in the nose and then ocular rosacea and today we're going to discuss pityriasis rosacea which can be mistaken for skin conditions like tinea which is a fungal skin infection also known as ringworm or psoriasis so careful diagnosis is needed there's also other less common illnesses like syphilis that can cause a similar rash and so to Today we're going to get into treatments and pityriasis rosacea and how it's different from those facial rosaceas that can cause ocular rosacea. So welcome back to eye school with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so that you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. And before you go, give a little tap on the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest eye tips and tricks I have for you. So pityriasis rosacea is a relatively common skin condition that causes a temporary rash of raised red scaly patches on the body. And it can affect anyone, but it's more common in older children and young adults, so ages 10 to 35. It's actually a skin rash that sometimes begins as a large spot on the chest, the belly, or the back, followed by a pattern of smaller lesions. The cause of pityriasis rosacea isn't well understood, but it may be triggered by a viral infection. It's currently thought that perhaps P. rosacea is caused by a viral infection, and it's thought that this virus is one of the herpes viruses. So children and young adults are more susceptible for unknown reasons, but recurrences are actually fairly rare. A person who develops this type of skin rash has only a 2% chance of experiencing it again. The condition causes widespread, minimally itchy skin rash on the trunk and upper legs and upper arms. It does usually go away on its own, but steroid creams, antihistamines, and in rare cases, antiviral drugs can help. Now, pityriasis rosacea is not considered an STD, and though it is recently thought to be identified as a herpes virus, that doesn't make it an STD. It's also not known to be due to any type of allergic reaction, and it's not a sign of any type of internal disease, so it kind of happens in isolation. So since it's neither contagious nor sexually transmitted, there's no reason to avoid close or intimate contact when somebody has this on their skin. The exact cause is unknown. There's no germ bacteria, virus, or fungus that's been found in people with the rash. However, certain types of herpes viruses can be part of the cause. It's also not associated with allergies, foods, medicine, or stress that we know of. In one uncommon type of P. rosacea, the rash can be concentrated on the armpits and groin or on the face, forearms, and shins. It's usually going to begin as a single patch of that pink to red scaly skin. That's called a herald patch, and that's normally on the trunk, neck, or upper arm. But this type of rosacea is not the type that commonly causes ocular rosacea, which I made a video about here. Pity rosacea continues for about 10 to 14 days and the rash gradually spreads out when you see new spots or bumps on your skin. Once the rash stops spreading, it lasts for a few days to a few months. This is considered a mild but common skin condition. It's characterized by these scaly pink inflamed skin and it can last from one to three months and usually leaves no lasting marks behind. It can be treated with corticosteroid creams or ointments. You can put this medicine on that rash two to three times a day for up to three weeks. 
Some people will use calamine lotion, a pink watery lotion that can help stop itching or even antihistamines. So phototherapy, specifically UVA1 phototherapy, has recently demonstrated high levels of efficacy and tolerability for treating a variety of inflammatory and neoplastic skin diseases. So phototherapy can take the form of exposing the skin to sunlight or to an ultraviolet bee light. Either one can help alleviate the symptoms of pityriasis rosacea. It reduces itching and heals that rash faster. The ultraviolet B light or UVB exposure is done at a doctor's office, not an optometrist. I would recommend a dermatologist. And if you wanted to try to use natural sunlight, you should consult your doctor first. Both types of phototherapy can cause the spots of the rash to darken and remain visible after the rash is gone. So given the commonality, mildness, and such a low recurrence rate for P rosacea, and with so many available treatments, in this particular situation for this specific condition, it does not appear that UVA1 phototherapy is really first line due to the fact that it can alleviate the symptoms by reducing itching and healing, but it can also increase the amount of spots that remain after after the rash is gone, which is something that doesn't happen if you use a corticosteroid cream or ointment, calamine lotion, or something like that. And finally, although this disease shares the name rosacea, it's really not the same as the types of rosacea that predominantly affect the face and cause ocular rosacea, which in turn causes dry eye syndrome, meibomian gland dysfunction, and all of these things I treat in my clinic. So ultimately, if you feel that you have a rash that looks like pity rosacea, I would absolutely recommend seeing your dermatologist or your primary care who can get you into your dermatologist for appropriate diagnosis and treatment. If you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit the button and bell so you don't miss notifications. That's it for today's iSchool. Class is dismissed.